Cindy from BeautyAndSwear.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create the feather portion of the dress that you saw. Um, I had someone that I just adore, who's an amazing dancer, ask me to help her make a dress. And when we made the dress, something that I noticed in putting feathers on the bottom of a skirt is that it created this stiffness where it just didn't move. And I thought, with the amount of feathers that we're putting on this, I just really wanted movement when she danced and just to create a lot of flow versus a stiff, flat dress. So in doing that, I was trying to figure out how do I do this, create a movement uh, with the feathers um, without the stiff look. So in this video, I'll show you how I did it and it's a way of creating slices in it. Um, but one of the other problems I came up against is when she moves, I don't want to see the back side of where the feathers are sewn. So in this video, I'm going to show you a quick, simple way to sew feathers on and create movement with those feathers that just gives it a great flow and brings your eyes towards it and accentuates every movement you make with the feathers. So if you're looking to put feathers on a costume, watch this video. It might give you some ideas and inspire you um, for some fun feathers on the bottom of your dress. When you're sewing feathers onto the bottom of a dress or skirt, the best way to do is start from the bottom if you're doing layers and work your way up. Always mark it. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just redo it right now just so I can show you but you would just take and mark lines where you want to sew it otherwise as the fabric moves it'll change so I um, always like to do a zigzag and I would go back over it so let's go ahead and sew this and you want to be careful because um, go nice and slow because the tips of the feathers are pretty stiff um, so you don't want to break a needle on it. So be really careful. And then I back up. Now, so in doing this dress, there was a lot of feathers. So I'm gonna sew both these rows on to show you. So you do that one first. That way you're not fighting with underneath. Now I'm gonna do um, this row. And we're gonna sew that on. Now normally I would back stitch all of it and maybe go over it once or twice. But what I found out in doing this, um, and this is just a sample, so I'm not gonna waste your time doing that, but you'll wanna make sure and secure those feathers in. So what I found is this was super stiff and there were so many feathers, there really wasn't movement in it. So I had to take a look at it and see, how am I going to fix that so that we can, um, there'll be movement and it won't just be a big, wide, stiff ball of feathers. So what I ended up doing, is I went in underneath and I made slits. Now don't worry, I know we're cutting through these seams so they're not secure, um, but I will show you what I ended up doing. And if you cut from the back, you'll lose a few feathers, just pull them away because you'll end up using them. But what's gonna happen is I realize then these slices, and I wanna cut the back of the fabric, um, and there's a, a thread and a little piece of fabric holding the strand of feathers together. So you don't need to um, go with a strand. You can go with loose feathers. It just does make it a little bit easier. So you don't wanna cut the feather itself, but you'll lose a few of these. Then I just went through and made even slices. Now, then I started thinking about what's the best way to do it so that, cause this, if this flips around, you're gonna see the back side of all the feathers and the fabric, and it's gonna look funny. See how it gives uh, pieces like this? So what I did, let's pull this back over, is I took every one of those individual ones, and then the feathers that fell off and extra feathers, I took them and I then sewed them in two rows not a lot because it's the back side but if it's the same color fabric it's going to blend a little bit more and what i did is i pulled the sides of the fabric in let's pull these feathers back so we don't sew on top of them and then now here you want to make sure really secure that um, and be careful going backwards on the feathers because they are so thick 
that you want to do that slow so you don't break your machine. Now, see there's that back side. And then now we switch to the top here. And um, if you want to, you can go through and trim the edge of those feathers. But then I just did the same thing in groups of feathers big enough to cover over the back. Now go slow. And if you have to hand do it, do that. And keep going. So now it gives you this. So if it flips over when the girl's dancing in it, you're seeing the back side. And imagine this is a color that would blend. So you're not going to see that, but trim up any of these edges because they can be sharp. So just trim them down a little. And then there you go. So now that is going to have a lot of movement. We had probably um, every, I would say three inches. It was groups like this in that particular dress, but it just gave it beautiful movement. So try it out, play with it. Um, if you do a loose zigzag stitch on a scrap piece of fabric, you'll always be able to go through and take it out. Um, but definitely you can use the same color. We had actually three rows on that particular dress and it was just amazing how um, gorgeous it turned out when she danced in it. So that's how we did the feathers at the bottom of the ballroom dancing dress. Hi, thank you for watching our videos. I am so excited about a lot of the new videos that we have coming out. They're gonna be amazing. Make sure and click subscribe to get you on the list so that you're gonna find out when a new video comes out. I also wanna let you know about Blue Moon Fabrics. Here is their Lycra color card. It is amazing. These are the people that we use. Now here's the thing, we resell their fabric, but we have to add in charges for shipping to us, shipping to you, for people in the back cutting, for people in the front printing out the invoices, for the shipping department, what they do. If you go directly to Blue Moon, you are gonna get amazing prices. Put in B Dancewear, all capital letters, you're gonna get an additional 5% off. They are one of the best, kindest companies I have ever worked with. So make sure, go to them, check out their fabrics, and if you need to make a purchase, put in B Dancewear, all capitals. Now, once you do that, make sure and email me just proof that you made that purchase and we will send you out a new guide that is exclusive for Blue Moon uh, purchases made with our code. This is gonna be a whole little booklet, a guide taking you from the beginning of making a costume. So how do you create it? You know, what colors do you wanna use? Schemes, um, uh, patterns so that you can sketch and draw your own ideas uh, and just be creative. But we're also gonna let you know like the industry, what do we do when we're making custom costumes, how we go in and we have to figure out yardage. We're going to make that really easy for you to do and give you simple templates on how to do it. And then if you're going into a studio to resell those costumes or to um, just make costumes, custom costumes for people, it'll give you a guide with some tips of some of the worst things I've ever done and how to fix them. But like I said, exclusive to people that use our code purchasing from Blue Moon Fabrics. So make sure and let us know um, that you made that purchase. Also, click the link above, go to bedancewear.com, get on our DIY guide list, and we'll let you know when new videos are coming out. You'll get that DIY guide. It's a few years old, but we're coming up with a new one with more modern stuff, better things, and that'll get you on that list to get the new one that will be coming out soon. If you have a comment, you wanna let us know something, make sure and click below. In the comments section, let us know what you're thinking. I will personally get back to you and um, let you know. Just remember to be kind, be inspired, bedancewear.com.